In this video, I'm going to show you through my techniques for turning old boring lecture slides and converting them into engaging and concise pieces of information. I used the iPad 4th generation and I recently made a video on using it as a student. Here I looked at pros and cons and I looked at the most cost effective iPad to get considering your own personal requirements. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already. So I'm in my final year of finance and therefore there's high volumes of content and the need for clear and well presented graphs is important for me to refer back to and draw effective study guides from them in the future. I use Notability as it just happened to be the one I chose way back in first year and has served me well ever since. Uh, with a gallery of stationary options and easy to use inbuilt features that I'll go through for drawings, graphs and diagrams. Moreover, its range in templates giving a nice range of options when it comes to note taking is really effective and definitely something I am grateful for having since starting university. So beginning with my notes, as a whole I like to summarise lecture slides as I go along. So using a colouring system for text, equations and explanations. So this cool feature of the iPad means when you pinch the corner of the screen it takes a screenshot and by simply cropping to your size and use your forefingers to swipe across the screen you instantly go back to your notes page. I personally use both diagrams from the slides and my drawn one. A neat feature of Notability is if you mimic a type of shape such as an arrow for when I'm drawing graphs it will then, if once you hold down the pen it will then give you that arrow and it just means it's a lot more of an easy seamless procedure for creating graphs by hand. Now it's certainly worth mentioning, despite having nice clean and concise notes and the importance that can bring you for, you know, having nice revision resources to refer back to um, if it's a complicated piece of content. It is certainly just as important, remember, the importance of active recall and spaced repetition. So make sure that you are gonna try and create some revision resources from these new, nice, neat notes that you are creating because just recreating lecture notes and that being your only piece of revision is a very passive way to learn information. And if you're gonna have a sat down exam, and you know it's the type of exam where it is memory based you're not going to score as well as you would do using revision resources now especially for university students when the content can get very thick and very complex it's probably best to get those boring lecture slides where you know for me for example i'll have about 10 to 15 hours of contact time a week which would lead to you know hundreds of new lecture slides every single week and being able to break them down and make them concise is definitely a skill that you need to learn if you want to try and achieve the best grades possible. In order to try and keep your notes nice and neat on the iPad it's definitely important to try and get used to the writing technique. So as opposed to writing with a piece of paper, uh, iPad has a nice feature where you can rest your wrist onto the iPad screen and treat it uh, as a place to be able to pivot your arm without you know, moving the actual screen itself. For me personally I like to really zoom in on the lines and then write from there so when you zoom out it's like this, the font is very small very con very concise and for me personally um someone who, who you know doesn't have the best handwriting it definitely comes across as nicer and nicer handwriting another part of notability which is definitely very beneficial for students is actually something that i worked out recently and it's being able to set up your ipad notes um next to each other so if you're having to refer back to something and you're drawing a more concise version of the notes from your lecture you can have them side by side meaning you'd have to constantly flip through different pages and another thing is that there's a microphone button in the top right hand corner and if you have a lecturer or a teacher that speaks too fast and they don't record their lectures or lessons um, you can hit that microphone button at the start of your lecture and you know write your notes as you go along but also you can listen back to that recording and it's all part of that note package that you opened at the start. For me personally the best part about writing notes on the iPad is just genuinely the organisation that it can give you. Um, I remember the days at A level where I just have stacks and stacks of folders, loose pieces of paper and just you know just rubbish everywhere which would get lost in the bottom of my bag and just get thrown away. Uh, with an iPad every single time you make a new note it can be nice and neatly filed away into either a subject or a division folder that you can then access back to. You can break it up however many times you like and yeah it's all just in one place and it's there forever you know if you download it back onto your iCloud or back it up it's going to be there forever until you delete it. Say if you're in your third year and I know for a lot of medical students they're continuously tested on previous knowledge that they learned in previous years. Being able to have that organisation that the iPad brings you is definitely beneficial for just trying to make sure you keep all your notes together and easy to access all pieces of information that you need to. So the way that I write my iPad notes is I'll go into the lecture and I'll set up all my iPad and my laptop equipment and just with a simple black pen I will try and blur as much information out as the lecture speaks because realistically compared to the actual slides that you're given your teacher will always tell you more useful and insightful information and explanations uh, 
than the ledger slides ever will. So make sure don't try and get it neat at the start. Just try and blurt it all out. And at the end of the lecture, hopefully you have two or three pages of somewhat coherent notes that you can then refer back to. Then about three to four hours later, once the information is settled in my brain, I'm gonna try and actively recall it but using um, colors and try and you know, brighten up the page. And then also use the textbook and the lecture slide to re-enhance the lecture material. And then that is what I'll use for my final piece of reference material going forward. From there, I'll draw my revision techniques, my revision materials if it's going to be flashcard blurting or just testing material now once you have your um, note-taking technique down to a T and learning how to use Apple pencil and so what then you can look to try and implement different type of note-taking techniques these are the ones where you can refer back to your lecture materials but there's active learning in place while you do so so this may be a case of dividing your page up into two-thirds where there's two-thirds of information and then there's one third of blurting material now if you turn your iPad page upside down, you can try and recreate those lecture materials that you learn uh, in black and then in red you can go over the things that you don't know and you can try and re-enhance those notes, read through them and then just basically try and challenge yourself again with different uh, active recall uh, based techniques and then try and get as much green material as you can. Before I set up my page for note taking, I tend to go for a coloured type tint, you know, just like over so it's easier on the eyes if it's yellow or orange. And I always go for the grid because I feel like grids, uh, for me personally, doing economics and finance definitely makes it easier for me to draw graphs. And also, I just quite like it for personal note taking as opposed to using lines. Now, the best thing about notability also is that on the right hand side, um, you can pre set all the different types of pens and highlighters that you want to use given their thickness, their colour, uh, if it's going to be a highlighter or a rubber. So for me personally I have a thin black pen for my handwriting and a thick black pen for stuff like lines and graphs. I have three different colours that tend to be green, black and blue for different various types of note taking and I have two highlighters. Now you can easily access and change all of the type of stationery that you want to use but just having preset ones makes note taking that little bit easier and can get you into the gist of writing and you know take away that activation energy that might be there when starting for note taking. I hope you've enjoyed this video as I touch upon my own simple but effective practices for using the iPad for note taking in school. Please hit the subscribe button if you like tech, productivity and finance based content and be sure to stick around for future videos.